We go to the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline, continuing the conversation for Titans and Chargers. And we're pleased to be joined by Andrew Catalan, play-by-play broadcaster for the NFL on CBS. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Hey, everybody. Good to be back with you guys. Glad the sun is shining. I didn't see much of it uh, <laughs> last weekend in Nashville, so uh, that's good to hear. Yeah, pretty gloomy uh, on and off the field, Andrew, around this team right now, as you know. And uh, I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts from being around this team last week and and being right here for that Jacksonville game. But what's the vibe like around this team from your perspective right now? How different are things from uh, the last time you'd seen this team ever since the John Robinson firing? It's crazy. Uh, Sunday will be the fifth time I call a Titans game, and then I'm actually coming back for the Texans game. So I'm sure a lot of Titans fans just threw their radio across the uh, car (laughs) when they heard that I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I know how it gets sometimes when you hear the same person over and over again. But, no, so I've seen them a bunch, and, you know, clearly what sticks out, I know it's an excuse, and, and the Titans will never say it, but they're really banged up, especially on defense. And they just can't get off the field on defense right now. And you look at this matchup with Justin Herbert and the third, you know, third best passing offense in the NFL going up against the Titans defense that just can't stop the pass right now. And, you know, I just heard Jonathan's update and Christian Fulton still didn't practice. I mean, to me, he's a big guy that they got to try to get back this week if possible. You know, look, I think they're built to, to withstand things like this because of Mike Vrabel, but right now they're right in the middle of it, and this is going to be a really tough game for them on Sunday. And, Andrew, it's incredible when you look at the quarterbacks this team has had to play, uh, going from Patrick Mahomes and, and Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers to Jalen Hurts and Joe Burrow and, and now Justin Herbert um, at, at the end of this after quite a performance by Trevor Lawrence last week. It, it just feels crazy, right, that the Titans are seeing another elite quarterback, and, and this guy perhaps might have as much arm talent as any of those other ones. Yeah, he's he's special. There's no doubt about it. And now that they have Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the field together, last week was basically the first time that's happened for a full game all year. Uh, they they really can make some plays in the pass game. I, I love Justin Herbert. I think he is a talented, special quarterback. And this is a team that even more so than the Titans, I, I guess maybe not more so, but you know they're in the wild card race. We know we're, they're not winning the division. They they All these games for the Chargers mean something. Not that it doesn't for the Titans, but even if the Titans, you know, stub their toe again, I still think that they're looking pretty good for the division. Chargers can't afford to lose a game with the Jets and the Patriots and the Dolphins all surrounding them in the wild card chase. So it's a big one for both teams. But when you look at the actual playoff on the Chargers, they can't lose at home uh, to a Titans team that's lost three in a row. So I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I just think that it, a, a big question for me is how much of these injured guys is Mike Vrabel going to get back to help out on Sunday? Andrew, it's, it's got to be uh, interesting for you guys covering any L.A. team for the most part because their home stadium can turn into the opposing team home stadium. How do you prepare for that, or do you ever have conversations with the, with the home team's head coach to say they have to work on silent count sometimes? Yeah, it's weird. I've noticed that from watching games. The only time I called a game at SoFi was during the COVID year when there was no fans there. So this will be the first time I call a game there with fans. I think that, to your point, the Chargers are used to that. Um, I, I think that, you know, when the Raiders and Chiefs and, you know, it's a destination city. So even the Dolphins fans, you could see them in the stands last week. So I, I don't think that bothers them at this point. Maybe it did when they first moved there and when they first had to adjust to it. Uh, but I think that's something that, unfortunately for them, they're probably pretty used to by now. Yeah, and and this matchup this weekend, too, we were speaking a whole lot about Justin Herbert and his passing game and whatnot, but I think with both teams, Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler, that is a matchup of who's going to you know, have the best numbers, not necessarily just on the ground because Eckler's very dynamic, but these two backs can make this game exciting. Yeah, no doubt. And look, I you know I read all the newspaper articles, and I, I know what's going on down in, in Nashville to a, to a certain extent. And I know that Todd Downing is a guy that takes a lot of criticism, and, and people were upset again with him on Sunday. To me, I thought the Titans' offense looked pretty good on Sunday. N- not enough to win the game, and I know there's obviously things they can clean up, and I know Henry didn't do anything after the second half. I understand all that, but when they did throw the when they did go to the passing game, they looked pretty good. 
I know it was a little too late maybe, but in, in the first half, Henry ran the ball well. I, I don't have as many concerns about their offense right now as I do about their injury-riddled defense, and that's going to be a big key because, as you said, we're, we're talking about Herbert and, and hyping him up as we should, but Eckler is just as dangerous, <laughs> uh, not only in the pass game, but as a running back as well. So they got some weapons, and it's, it's tough to slow them down right now. Is it surprising mentioning Derrick Henry? It, it, not a lot of people are talking about him this season just because of how poorly the Titans' offense is doing, but he's still second in the league uh, behind Josh Jacobs in rushing yards. It, it's kind of crazy because he's still doing his thing, but he's just he's not doing as much that we're used to like in the past because the Titans' offense has been so stale. No doubt, and I think I had my I have a great stat guy. His name is Mike Natero, and I had I think I mentioned this on the broadcast on Sunday. But I think the big thing that's different about Derrick Henry this year are his numbers in the fourth quarter because we're yeah. used to him being that closer, that finisher, and we haven't had that this year to the point where Mike, my buddy, said fourteen straight games now mm-hmm. without a fourth quarter touchdown for Derrick Henry. And prior to this year, he averaged 5.1 yards per carry in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. This year, it's down to around three yards per carry in the fourth quarter. So those, to me, that's the big difference with Derrick Henry is that whether the game has dictated it or it's just he hasn't gotten going, they haven't been able to run the ball and finish games in the fourth quarter like we're used to seeing. And I think that's what they miss right now. What they missed last week was certainly Traylon Burks. I know that Mike Vrabel said this week yesterday that he is not yet out of concussion protocol. We might learn something different today. But if he is able to play on Sunday, Andrew, like how much of a difference maker can he be for this offense? Because we've seen spurts of it when he's been healthy. Big time. I mean, I think that he is a huge key for their offense. To me, it looks like Chig is becoming Ryan's favorite target, mm-hmm. and I would put him out. The I'd put him out there even more. But they need a guy like Burks who can draw the attention of the defense because right now I, I think that's one thing they lack, and I think that's one thing why Henry hasn't had those finishing numbers because they can really they can really focus on Derek. There's nobody else right now that really, you know, oh, we got to put this guy on this guy. I think Burks helps. Uh, Tannehill's completion percentage is about 10 points higher this year with Burks on the field than when he's not on the field. I think it's significant because it's not only Traylon making plays, but he draws the attention of the D, which opens up other people in that offense. Andrew Cannell on CBS Sports with us this morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Uh, Andrew, I know you mentioned the weapons for L.A., the injury-riddled defense for the Titans. What individual matchup intrigues you the most where you feel like this game was won or lost for Tennessee? Well, you know, I think that the answer to that, and it's not a cop-out, it's just it's incomplete. I mean, is Danico Autry going to play? Mm-hmm. Is Christian Fulton going to play? Is Zach Cunningham coming back? I-, I think he will. I think that was a good sign. Not that I know anything, but it's just a good sign that he's mm-hmm. able to be activated in practice uh, yesterday. So I think I got to kind of know like who's going to be out there before I can say what matchup I'm worried about. I mean, like Jeffrey Simmons, we saw him again, have to leave the game for a couple plays. He, he's clearly not 100%. Uh, you know, how much of Jeffrey Simmons are we going to have uh, on Sunday? So I, I hate to say like, I, you know, I don't know, or but it's just, sure. I don't know. I mean, I don't know who's going to be out there right now, but I, to me, the big guy is Fulton. I think they need him back mm-hmm. in the secondary because of these weapons that Herbert has to throw to. Andrew, imagine if there's any team that you're okay with seeing week in and week out. It's got to be the team that played 91 players last year, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> I feel like you might be seeing the Titans a couple of times in a season, but you're also seeing like different Titans teams, I'm sure, over the course of a season as well. It's wild. I mean, last week I, I handwrite all of my charts, yeah, and it was like like a first graders art project last week. I mean, there was like guys that were like hanging off the side of the folder that I had to add in at the last minute. So it's a little cleaner right now, but I I don't know who knows what's going to happen with practice squad elevations and injuries over the next couple of days. But I do have a lot of notes on a lot of different Titans from the last couple of years. I'll tell you that. And Andrew, I appreciate you saying that because that's one thing I always joke with people 
about play-by-play and, and learning to do the job is that no one tells you in college how much being a play-by-play broadcaster is basically like doing a, a fourth-grade art project and like arts and crafts, <laughs> like literally every single week, right? I mean, when, I, when I'm when i on the airplane and somebody next, like I pull out all my stuff and yeah. like colored pens and markers, the looks that I get are like, <laughs> Who is this person? What 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 is going on next to me right now? I mean, this, the flight attendants are like, whoa, whoa, is that? Are you like an artist? I'm like, no, this is actually, uh, you know, the Titans defense. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's a, really, it's a crazy world we live in, but it's fun. Andrew Catalan, our guest, catch catch Andrew Catalan along with James Loft and Amanda Renner this Sunday as the Chargers take on the Titans on the NFL on CBS. Uh, Andrew, we appreciate the time as always, and hopefully the next time you're in town, the the sun is out at some point as well. We appreciate it. Well, that's next week. I'll be there next week. It's going to be cold, Andrew. The Texans game. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. There's Andrew (laughs) Catalan with us this morning on the Mark Spade Real Estate Hotline.